In this demonstration, I'm going to talk about setting up a Modbus TCP IP master port. The master ports for serial or TCP IP are very similar, and TCP IP master is the most used Modbus port, so we'll use that one in this example. The ports are listed here in rows, so we'll create a port by selecting the new, and we'll just call it port 1. If we wanted another port, we would say, for example, port 2, and it would be listed here. You can have any number of ports here, any number of connections to external devices. Or you could actually have one, because it's DCP IP, you could actually have both ports talking to the same device, uh, assuming that device would allow multiple connections. So we'll just delete port 2, because we're not going to use it. Now we'll go to port 1 and select the settings. These are the settings to connect to the external device. And we know the IP address is 64. If it was a dynamic IP address, we could enter a host name and let the lookup mechanism find out the IP address. We know the port number is 502, which is the default Modbus TCP IP address. And we know the slave address is 31. So we can select test. And it's going to attempt to read register 400,001. This program uses a six-digit Modbus addressing. The external device can use a five, it doesn't matter. We just use six because we allow the full 65,535 addresses. If we went with five, we can only go to four, 9,999. We're going to attempt to connect to IP address here at slave address 31, port number 502. The card is going to be using the network interface card as this IP address. When we select the test button, if it connects and is successful in reading this register, you'll see these two counters increment. So we select test and we can see that it did connect and it is incrementing, so we are talking to the external device. If we had a secondary port, it would be listed here and the test button would be enabled, but we're not using a secondary. These status registers are optional and they are used to hold counters or to place the value of these counters in these registers if configured. Read writes are the number of read writes issued and it increments every time a read or write is issued and then whenever we get an acknowledgement this counter increments. Watchdog count is the number of watchdog timeouts which is based on this timer over here. Whenever a read or write is issued it starts this timer and after this time, in this case 5,000 milliseconds, if the timer expires, it logs a watchdog count and reissues the write or read uh, depending on the logic being used. Delay time is the amount of delay between issuing commands and it's a way to throttle requests to the slave. Some slaves can be overwhelmed by request because too many devices are accessing them or they just can't respond fast enough. And this is a way to delay uh, reads or writes to, to that device. So we know it's connected so we can select OK. We're going to select reads, writes. HMIs are point based or address based. This program uses blocks. It sends and receives data in blocks of registers because it's Modbus. In this case, we're wanting to read from the slave device from address 400,001. So we're going to issue a read. Destination is where in the address space of this program do we want to place the data. In this example, we're just going to place it in the same address internally as what we receive it from. You could, you could make this 400,010, for example, and then it would read from 400,001. In this case, we're going to tell it to read five words, and it would place the collected data into 400,010, 11, 12, 13, 14. But in this case, we're just going to use the same register. Enabled is a way to disable for testing or for whatever reason reads or writes uh, without having to delete the row. So we're going to want this to be enabled for later use. We can select the test button and what it will do is it will attempt to 
connect to the device configured and read these registers. So we select test. We see down here in the bottom left that read issued is incrementing. And if this wasn't successful, you'd see maybe watchdog timeout or illegal data access or some other error code. And then it would attempt to connect and read again. So now I'm going to go to the slave and I'm going to change address 4 and set it to 37. And you'll see it appear right here. So we know that the connection is valid and working. Count is byte for coils and inputs because sometimes a device may only have, for example, four inputs. So if you tried to read a word, it potentially would fail. So you have to set it for, for a byte. Uh, so count is byte for coils and inputs. It only applies to registers that are zero based or one based. It doesn't apply to three or four. This is to a way to move the reads up or down. If you wanted to, for example, have read, write, read, write, read, write, and then you enter them in a different order, you can use this to, to change the order. Select OK. You can rename the port here or delete it here. That's it for this demonstration.